Today, I'm going to set up a Raspberry Pi to run Octoprint, which will act as a network-enabled print server for your Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer. I'm Brian, and you're watching BV3D. So, this is the first in a series of episodes covering upgrades for the Monoprice Maker Select Plus 3D printer. I want to get the electronics upgrades out of the way, and then we can start working on the hardware upgrades. So I'm going to be setting up Octoprint on a Raspberry Pi. And this is not so much to improve your print quality, but to improve the quality of your interaction with the printer. Because the combination of the Raspberry Pi and Octoprint adds a ton of functionality to your printer. It gives you a web browser interface to the printer. You can store and organize G-code files by project or type. You can stream a webcam to monitor a print job. And you can create time-lapse videos of a print. You can also easily update the firmware on your printer, and we'll make use of that feature in the next episode. So what is a Raspberry Pi? Well, a Raspberry Pi is a small, single board computer. It's not as powerful as a desktop computer, but there are a lot of computing tasks that don't need all the power of a desktop computer. So for tasks that need a computer but don't need a lot of computer, it's perfect. So what is Octoprint? Well, Octoprint is print server software for your 3D printer. And it allows you to send print jobs to your printer across the network using a simple drag and drop web interface. And in fact, you interact with Octoprint exclusively through its web interface. For me, it's pretty much a requirement that I have a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint driving my 3D printer. But is it hard to set up? Don't you have to download, install, and configure an operating system for the Raspberry Pi? And then download, install, and configure Octoprint? No, it's a lot easier than you might think, thanks to Octopi. So that brings up our next question. What is Octopi? Well, Octopi is the combination of Octoprint and a Raspberry Pi. It's a disk image that you install on a micro SD card for the Raspberry Pi, and it contains the operating system and a pre-installed version of Octoprint. So what do we need to get started? Well, we need some hardware. We need a Raspberry Pi computer, a micro SD card, a 5 volt 2.5 amp power supply that terminates in a micro USB connector, an enclosure for the Raspberry Pi, and a USB cable to connect the Raspberry Pi to the printer. And you're going to need some software. You're going to need to download the Octopi disk image, and you're going to need to download Etcher to install Octopi on the micro SD card. And don't worry, both Octopi and Etcher are free software. Okay, so let's go and get Octopi. So if you go to octoprint.org, and look down near the bottom of the page, there is a download button. Click that, and from here you can download the current version of Octopi. So we'll do that. And then once that has finished downloading, we will get the disk image file and set that aside. And then we can go get Etcher. Okay, so now that we've got Octopi, let's go and download Etcher. You can find Etcher at etcher.io. It automatically detects the operating system you're running, so you can download a version for Windows, Mac, or Linux, and it knows that I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to go ahead and download that. And now that we have Octopi and Etcher downloaded, we can go ahead and use Etcher to install Octopi on the micro SD card for the Raspberry Pi. So let's get started on that. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch Etcher. I'm just going to run it from the disk image. I'm not going to bother installing it on my computer. So the first thing that Etcher wants to do is have me select an image. And the image that it wants is the Octopi disk image that we downloaded earlier. Then it wants me to select a drive. And the drive that I'm going to select is the, uh, the micro SD card. I use a 32 gig card, so I'll pick that and continue. The next step is to flash the card, and this is going to install the, uh, the image onto that uh, micro SD card. So let me provide my administrator credentials because we're tweaking with the contents of a disk, and uh, we'll continue on. So that will copy the contents of that disk image to the micro SD card. And when it's done, it will verify that everything copied over correctly. And then it will automatically eject the card 
from the computer. So I'll let that do its thing and uh, when it's done we will proceed on to the next step. Okay, so with that done we can quit Etcher. So the next thing we need to do is edit the Wi-Fi configuration file on the SD card. Now, Etcher ejected the card when it was done writing everything to the card. So we'll need to remove and reinsert the card in order to be able to continue working on it. So I've reinserted the card in the computer and its icon has appeared on the desktop. So we'll open it up. And the file that we want to edit is octopiwpasupplicant.txt. I'm going to move this over here. This is what controls how the um, how the Raspberry Pi is able to get on the network. And since we want it on our Wi-Fi network, we'll need to edit the configuration so that it can do that. I'm using a WPA2 uh, secured network, so we're going to edit this part right here. And what I need to do is remove the um, sorry. What I need to do is remove these little hashtags from in front of those four lines right there, starting with the network and ending with the, um, the closing curly brace. And here where it says SSID, I need to put my network's name. This is the name that you would see on a Mac uh, in the airport menu. So mine is named Atlantis, so I will put that there. And here is where you would put your password. Now, I'm not going to give you my Wi-Fi password because you'll be showing up here and freeloading off my network, and we don't want that. No, I, I know you wouldn't do that. But still, I can't put that here. So let's pretend that I put it there, and then uh, we'll continue on. Now, because the Raspberry Pi is a UK product, by default, it's expecting to be used in the United Kingdom. So. I'm here in the US, so I'm going to comment the line that says country equals Great Britain and uncomment the line that says country equals US. Now at this point I'm done making changes to the file, so I can save it and close it and then we can eject this card and put it in our Raspberry Pi and start the Pi up. Okay, you're Going to have to forgive me using this cardboard as a uh, backing material here, but my desk is a really dark wood color. The uh, enclosure that I'm going to insert the Raspberry Pi into is also quite dark, so I wanted to have some contrast. So, uh, what we're going to do here is take this enclosure, this is the base of it, and we're going to snap the Raspberry Pi into it. that. And then here is where we're going to put the SD card, the micro SD card. So that is just going to go right in there. And now that's installed and we're ready to power this thing up and uh, see if we can find it on the network. Okay, so we've got the Raspberry Pi plugged into power and that's literally the only cable that's going to the device. Now we need to find it on the network. Because the, uh, the installation of Octopi includes a pre-configured zero configuration networking protocol, Bonjour, we're able to find it on the network by knowing its name. And the default installation is, is simply named octopi.local. So if you type that address into your web browser, if everything has gone according to plan, you will now be communicating with Octopi running on the uh, Raspberry Pi. So there's some stuff that we need to run through in order to get it all configured. So we're going to click Next. So the first thing that the wizard wants us to do is set up access control. If you are planning on having this instance of Octoprint on your Raspberry Pi, accessible from the outside world, then you are going to need to have some access control enabled on it. Otherwise, anybody connecting to it from outside your network is going to be able to 
start print jobs, stop print jobs, delete files, and generally wreak havoc on the device, and so we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. Ordinarily, mine are inside my network and are not visible from the outside, so I normally skip this step. But again, it's important if you're not sure whether or not your network can be accessed from the greater internet, you're going to want to set this up. Since this is going to be our monoprice maker select press, I'm going to call it uh, MSP for maker select plus is our username. And I'm going to set a password. And we are going to keep access control enabled. And so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and have my web browser save the password for me so I can log into it later. So we're going to continue on. I normally leave this on. It pings one of Google's DNS servers and I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that happening. So I will tell it to enable the connectivity check. And next. This is something that you're going to want to leave on. If you're starting from scratch, which is essentially what we're doing here, we don't want to accidentally install or run a plugin that was created for the older versions of Octopi, which might cause problems. So we're going to tell this to enable the plugin blacklist, and then we'll continue on. Octopi includes uh, the older Cura slicing engine, which is really kind of handy because you can actually drag an STL file over to it and have it slice and uh, convert that to G-code for printing. Now it knows that we haven't imported a slicing profile and that's fine. We're not going to import one, but we will create one. And so our default profile is going to be like this. I'm gonna call it maker select plus. It will be our default setting though. And the model is going to be maker select plus. And that's our general information for the profile. Now we need to tell it to print bid and build volume. So the origin is lower left, not center. And we have a rectangular print bed, not circular, because we're a Cartesian printer and not a delta. The printer has a heated bed, and the X and Y are 200. Z on this printer is 180 millimeters. And so we're good on that. We'll check our axes. I ordinarily just leave this set as is. I don't mess with it at all. And here is where we specify that we have a single extruder and we have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on it. We will go ahead and continue on because we've got the profile set. We'll click finish. And that should be it for our setup. Now, the next thing that we're going to need to do is I'm going to physically connect this Raspberry Pi to the printer. And so let me grab a USB cable and connect the two, and then we'll tell it to connect. Okay, one side is plugged into the printer. The other side is getting plugged in here. Now there are two things plugged into that Raspberry Pi. The automatic settings for the connection should just work. So I'm going to click connect and this should connect to the printer. And it has. So we're good. That, that's really a, all there is to getting a Raspberry Pi set up on the Monoprice Maker Select Plus. At this point, we now have control of the printer and we have the ability to send files to it, and start print jobs. I need to get a file. Let's open Cura. We'll use Cura to do the slicing. I want to slice just a, a quick little print. It takes about 20 minutes to print. They're called bugs. So I'm going to grab that. We're going to print this at uh, 0.2 millimeter layer height probably 200 degrees on the extruder and 60 on the bed. And we'll print a skirt around it. And that should take care of it. I'm gonna save this out to my desktop. 
and then we will drag and drop that over here. The two different drop targets are on the left and the right. If you drop on the right side, it uploads to the SD card in the printer if one is installed. On the left, it stores the file in the SD card on the Raspberry Pi. So there's our file, we've uploaded it, and now we're gonna print. So you'll notice there are a lot fewer steps involved in printing when you have OctoPrint installed. Instead of the old way where you would slice a file, save the file on your desktop, walk over to the printer, remove the SD card from the printer, insert the SD card in your computer, copy the G-code file to the SD card, eject the SD card from your computer, take it back over to the printer, insert it in the printer, use the printer's control panel to navigate through the list of files and start a print. Now all you have to do is drag the G-code file from your desktop to the browser window and then pick print. That's really all there is to it. I did want to point out that there are channel support links down in the description below. If you would do me a favor and check those out, I would appreciate it. You don't have to, but you know your support does help the channel and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already yet, you can do so by clicking here. And I've got another video over here that you might want to watch. Also, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. But either way, uh, leave a comment and let me know what you think. All right, well, that's pretty much it for the video. So I'll see you in the next one and go print something cool.